Welcome back, writers. It's been a long time. Before I get lost in being sentimental about how long it's been, let's just get out of the way the idea that we are focusing on for writing today. And that's that to really take our story to the next level, sometimes we must re-see the story. Let's check it out. Okay, writers. So I said re C, which might sound weird. I could have said C in a different way. I could have said, I know. I could have said revision. And I bet when I say revision, it almost makes you nauseous. Like you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit because we are so far into this revision journey that you're starting to be like, okay, I'm done adding things to it. And I can understand that. But this is part of the writing process. This process is not quick. And it's important that you understand this is really where the best writing comes from. It's not from that first draft you wrote. Speaking of drafts, that really is the meat of what we're gonna do today. A new draft. (laughs) Wow. Not only are we revisioning, but we're doing a new draft. Mr. Ruck, I might just turn the video off right now. I understand. Here's the deal. Right now, I want you to take a look at the story mountain that's on my screen. So on the story mountain, you can see that there's a, an external part of the story, which is the black part, the black boxes. And then there's an internal part to the story, the white boxes. The difference between those two things is going to help you to get inside of what your story is truly about. And so those black boxes are like quick summaries of the action of what's happening. And the white boxes are what's happening inside your character. The emotions, mood, feelings, thoughts. It's important that we really explore the internal part of our story if we're going to really understand and show to the reader what the story is truly about. I know that I've talked about considering what your story is really about, but here's the difference. We are going to do a whole new draft, only thinking about one thing, what your story is really about. And to prepare yourself to do that, you need to do the story mountain. As we put in those internal things, we'll see how they match up with external things. And we're going to need to think about the idea that really it's the internal stuff, things happening inside your character that let us know what your story is about. So the work today is Story Mountain prepares you for the draft. Let's look at my example and I'm going to write a couple things in there. Okay, so... Uh, we are going to operate uh, in the world of story um, and a story that I haven't really talked to you too much about. And that's my uh, bike riding story. It's a time where I decided to wear flip flops uh, when I was riding my bike after my mother had told me not to, of course. So I'm going to start by doing the external part of the story because it's easy to just think of the events that happened. So I'm going to start by double clicking in one of the boxes and it says the font is 14. I'm going to make it a little smaller just so that I know I can fit a couple sentences in there. So 10. So, you know, I know in order for this story to get on track, the first thing that needs to happen in my lead, which is really the first two boxes is I need to say, um, ask mom, to ride bikes, she tells me yes, but don't 
wear those sandals. Yeah. I'm going to go into the... Did I not spell sandals right? Interesting. Okay, there we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. All right, next up is I run... Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to change the font every single time. That's very frustrating. Okay, I run out of the house with my sandals on. That's how I do. No, because I'm an idiot. Uh, I run out of the house with my sandals. I grab my bike and pedal after my friend. Okay, intro. That's what I'm considering to be my intro. So now before I move on to the heart of my story here, I'm going to see if I can match up the things that are happening with the things that are happening inside my character. So first off, when my mother is yelling at me, and her mean, nasty voice. I'm kidding. She was the, she is the nicest person in the world. So ask mom to ride bikes. She tells me yes, but don't wear those sandals. I'm thinking, ugh. I'm going to say I'm thinking, whatever. It will be fine. No, the fun is really big. I'm trying to ignore it, but it's eating my soul alive. Okay, 10. Oh, yay. See, I can fit more. I'm thinking whatever, it will be fine. Um, that won't happen to me. So these are my thoughts. I could add in there like an emotion if I wanted to. I could say, you know, my emotion is... Hmm... What would my character have been thinking at the time? I'm probably excited. I'm just so excited to get to go play with my friend that I'm not going to let some silly little sandals get in my way. Okay, next. I run out of the house with my sandals. I grab my bike and pedal after my friend. I'm definitely excited. I don't want to use the same emotion over and over. If you've already put an emotion in a previous box... It's not really necessary to repeat it. So now I'm thinking, okay, in this scene, as I run out of the house and I intentionally grab my bike and pedal with my sandals on, I'm probably going to think to myself, mm, hope this works out. Because my thinking, if I'm planning this out, my thinking is a really good place to show what the story is truly about. That's how we can definitely express that to our readers because as the narrator of the story, I'm also able to see into my character's head and say, hey, guess what? What he's telling you right here, these hints about what's going to happen, they're not on accident. So I hope this works out. My mom is normally right, but she can't ride a bike like I can. Ha 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 ha. I mean, there's probably some truth to those thoughts. So that's all I really need to show you as far as how this story mountain works. The idea is you start with the black box, you pair it up with a white one. You can do two at a time like I did. And then the next three, because that's sort of the heart of the story you could do together. You could do all the black ones and then the white ones. Personally, I think that's the worst idea. I would try to, as quickly as possible, pair black box with white box and work your way through the story. It's hard to go back and think, where was my mind at when I wrote that black box? Okay. Hmm. I would suggest doing it at the same time. All right. So here's what we need to take away from today. That writers in order to get a writers in order to be able to see their story in a new way, they have to be purposeful. They have to put on different glasses. Those glasses help them to see the story in a way that they hadn't expected before. In a way that they may not have been thinking of or planning to, to do. So that's why this plan, this story mountain, is going to hopefully change 
your story and what it looks like for the better. If nothing else, it will be another way your story could have went. And I realize these are true stories, but that doesn't mean every time we tell it, it happened exactly the same way. So, just a real quick reminder. Today, you're going to finish your story mountain, turn it in, and then you're going to do a new draft based upon some of those new thinkings you added to that story mountain. Okay. Writers, it's been great to see you. And until next time, happy writing. <laughs>